All right. I have a special guest, uh, the definition of a special guest on the line, line seven, VIP hotline. Sarah Carter's with me, investigative re- reporter. You know her from Fox News, and uh, she's got a great Twitter account. But the main thing we're talking about today is her new film she co-produced and she stars in called Not in Vain. It's a documentary it's available now. I watched it on YouTube yesterday, and it's so powerful and apropos, Sarah, because, uh, first of all, thanks for joining me uh, on Breitbart News Daily. But we've spent two hours today on the broadcast talking about immigration which is sadly back in the news. And what your documentary does is it really walks through the industry that goes into illegal immigration and the collateral damage that uh, it it takes on the American public. Talk to us about it. You hit it right on the right on the head there with uh, talking about it as collateral damage. And thank you so much for having me on today. I really appreciate it. This movie is very special, this documentary, dear to my heart, um, not in vain, and it's a nonprofit film trying to educate the public as well as lawmakers and our school systems uh, and, most importantly, parents on the drug trade, on the drug cartels, how this enormous $100 billion industry is actually a national security threat to our country and what it's doing to our children. I mean, the increase in opioid heroin deaths across the United States is extraordinary. In fact, the DEA says this is the greatest threat. The drug cartels right now are the greatest threat to the United States, something that we need to pay attention to. And as you've seen with this um, Honduran um, migration, these caravans of people coming to the United States, This is something that we have to be very mindful of. This isn't just about migration. This is about large industrial narco-terrorists choosing to push through our borders, not just human trafficking, but drugs as such as fentanyl right now, which is which is extraordinarily yes. dangerous. Um, and so what we try to do with this film is really show from a very high perspective what is happening overall, not just about the addiction, not just about the recovery, but how it's targeting our communities. And I just hope everyone gets a chance to see it. Yeah, everyone has to see it because this walks through and I I really just hope that the people who think that it's about race or something, that the reason why we want the border closed, the reason why we think of immigration, according to a poll we have out at Breitbart News, number one issue in for this electorate for 2018 is immigration. And this walks you through why it is not a race thing. It's about when you see fentanyl coming over the border and it's not stopping it. Texas and California is here. It's going up into Ohio. It's going up to in, into Illinois. It's drastically changing these communities It's destroying lives. Uh, and it is a industry that starts in Central America. Uh, the, the opioids are grown in Mexico, they're laced with trace amounts of synthetics uh, and the, the type of synthet- synthetics that kill people. And these, uh, w- w- your, the stories that you highlight in the movie are not the ones that you see on uh, the vast majority of news outlets. That's absolutely right. We talk about how it's targeting. Um, let's just let's just start with simple numbers here. You know, the annual um, deaths from overall drug use in 2017 was 72,287. That's what the CDC had. Of those, 49,000 plus deaths were involving opioids, the majority of which were coming from across the border. Think about that. Uh, you know, Heidi Riggs, who's the mother in the film, and she talks about the death of her daughter, Marin, who died two weeks after her 20th birthday. Yeah. She says it's like a 737 plane crashing every single day in America. That's the number of deaths, over 115 people dying every single day. And here was a mom, upper middle class family, worked for the attorney general of Ohio, never believed that her daughter who looks like, when you see her pictures, when you see her in the film, like the girl next door, would ever, ever become wrapped up in this situation. You know, we always think of junkies. We think, oh, that's a junkie's problem. And that's a bad way of thinking about it, too, because they were people, right, that ended up in a really terrible circumstance um, and ended up addicted to narcotics. Now what we're seeing is not just the inner cities. 
We're seeing it spread across the communities, into suburbia, into rural parts of America, to the point where, I mean, the threat really is we're losing a generation of people. If we do not put a stop to this, it will literally change the map of the United States of America, the way we look, the way we are, and and the threat that is potentially coming our way. When we think about fentanyl, you know, we... Uh, uh, the coroner in uh, Dr. Ortiz, who's in the film from Franklin County out of Ohio, I want to thank the state of Ohio, too. Such enormous cooperation from both law enforcement as well as the medical community in Ohio. When you think of this, Dr. Ortiz said, you know, before she used to think of um, uh, fentanyl as being used for anesthesia, right? That's how doctors always consider fentanyl, highly potent, used to put a patient under. Now when they think of fentanyl, they think of death. They see young people in their morgues every day, and the numbers are rising. In fact, in Franklin County, Ohio, the numbers became so great of the death overdoses that Ortiz actually had to order freezers to bring in to hold the bodies outside the morgue. I mean, and this is not just in Franklin County. We're seeing this across the United States. And the reason is because fentanyl uh, is so powerful, what the drug cartels are doing, I mean, they ship it in from China, bring it into Mexico. They're, uh, you know, and sometimes the Chinese just move it straight into the United States by courier through air. But a lot, the great majority of it is coming through the drug cartels through the southern border. And they yes. mix these chemicals in backroom trailer labs or in labs in Mexico or inside the United States, and they create pills, pills that look just like the pharmaceutical pills you get that look like Oxycontin, Percocet, um, you know, Xanax, and you can't tell the difference between a real pill and a fake pill. The point is, the fake pill is heroin and fentanyl, and the first time you take it, you could die. It's like playing Russian roulette. So if kids and parents aren't educated on this, if they don't understand what's happening, they could be taking a pill that is coming from some lab somewhere across the border or some makeshift trailer here in the United States with people that don't know what they're doing, and it's going to kill you. Um, fentanyl is also considered a weapon of mass destruction. And in the, in, the, in the documentary itself, you'll hear the cops talk about this, how dangerous and potentially dangerous it is. They caught one load of 118 um, uh, pounds of fentanyl, which could have killed over 26 million people, is what they estimated when they when they seized this uh, fentanyl seizure in uh, Nebraska. Across the United States, they're seizing fentanyl. Uh, a lot of this, again, coming from across the border. So something needs to be done. And this is not about, you know, um, targeting people from other places or saying we want to shut down the border because people are anti-immigrant. My mother was an immigrant. I speak Spanish fluently. I travel to Mexico all the time, um, whether it's for work and sometimes on vacation. This is about, and, and, and of course, the Mexican people are also in danger of this. Their, their lives, they are prisoners in their own community, some of them because right. of the drug cartels. What we are trying to say is that there needs to be something done about the border, about this porous border that is potentially creating such a dangerous scenario for our country. We won't be able to stop it. And I think the documentary, Not in Vain, outlines what those dangers are. It's very matter of fact. It's very clear. And, and in a way, it, it taught me. I thought I knew enough about this. I did not even know the half of it until I started doing this film. Yeah, Sarah Carter's got a lot of fans, and you can see why. Sarah Carter DC on Twitter, SarahACarter.com. The documentary, Not in Vain, is available now on YouTube. You can just watch it. It's a 45 minutes. I love that length, so people can, can bite it off in, uh, in one bite. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. It's very informative. And what you do, Sarah, is you really walk through this chain of events. Is The left media would like to distill this down to race, which is zero to do with any of this. Uh, this has to do with an industry that is enabled by the we are essentially with keeping our borders open uh, we are not only making our own people susceptible to these drugs coming over they're very dangerous they're very addictive they're ruining lives they're killing people but we're also enriching the cartels and it becomes a vicious circle where the cartels are gaining power within mexico despite some efforts to push back uh, there's very little uh, the journalists are getting executed uh, and they've really taken over it, it, mexico in many places is becoming a failed narco state right now and this is exactly the the 
what is inevitable, given the fact that we have this open border and we're enabling this industry. Human smuggling gets wrapped up into it. And you break this down very clearly. This is the story that's just not told by those who want to kind of white knight all illegal aliens. Absolutely. You know, we've been talking about in the news and everyone's heard about Khashoggi, you know, who was um, apparently or allegedly killed by the Saudi government and uh, in, in such a gruesome way. But Mexico was the second most dangerous place to be a journalist in the entire world next to Syria. Think about that. What we saw going on in Syria with journalists, in Mexico, it's just as dangerous. For the people of Mexico, the death rates have skyrocketed through the roof, making it some of the most, just last year, and this year alone in May, the deaths that have spiked from drug cartel battles and as well as crossfire of innocent people and people being strong-armed was so high that it was the highest Mexico had seen in years, and in fact, I think in May, the highest they had ever seen. So right now what we're looking at is our southern neighbor who we are trying to work cooperatively with. Uh, The the Trump administration is trying to work on, you know, economic issues with Mexico as well as Central America with our other um, neighbors south of our border. But what we're seeing is an enormous power surge by these drug cartels, new cartels rising to the top. Robert – Arce, who is also in the film, and I know he's a contributor for Breitbart, he is, uh, is profoundly made a, a, made a profound statement. He said, we don't even know where the border is anymore. That's right. We don't even know where it is anymore. Here's a man who spent a lot of time of his life in Mexico working you know, with State Department and other intelligence agencies on the drug trafficking and on the drug cartels. And right now what we're seeing is the border move so far to the north. We don't even know where it is. We know that Sinaloa cartel has basically divided Ohio State up and set up shop across the United States with distribution centers. Uh, Chris Farrell with Judicial Watch described it, and I thought it was a really good description, as like Walmarts, right? They never run out of milk. Well, the drug cartels never run out of drugs. And some people try to make the argument that, well, why would the drug cartels really want to uh, kill their you know, to kill the, their, the people who are actually purchasing the, uh, their, their narcotics. Well, they don't really care because now with fentanyl and with the amount of heroin that they're pumping into the United States, losing people here and there, and we've seen large drug spikes um, in, in Baltimore of tainted narcotics um, that have led to enormous increases in overdeaths. We've seen that in Baltimore, New Hampshire, Ohio, uh, and throughout the United States. They don't care because they've already made the profit. So we as a nation have to be willing to face, one, not our our own problems with addiction, but also what is happening across the border. What is this picture going to look like 10 years from now? Because I've been doing this for a few decades, and it's only gotten worse and worse. And now it's really hitting our children hard. And I don't think our parents or our lawmakers – Um, really understand or are educated enough to understand how potentially dangerous and how dangerous it is right now. And it's very important. I think it's very important for kids themselves to understand that taking one of these pills just one time could lead to their death. They're really playing Russian roulette. Yes. So Sarah Carter, again, is with me. The documentary, Not in Vain, available on YouTube now. And and Sarah, this is the big picture because we started the show. We spent about two hours going through immigration, and uh, I'm a huge supporter of the president, uh, but I'm uh, not thrilled in how the immigration agenda was implemented. I I think a lot of this falls on Congress, uh, but it's – I just want people to know, to illustrate, that this is the true story of an open border. This is what it means. Your story in this documentary is what an open border is all about. It has nothing to do with race. It has only to do with what is happening to our communities. And we are propping up the most evil individuals on the planet uh, by having this open border and by not addressing these issues. That's right. And when we don't address these issues, when we bury our heads in the sand, it comes at the expense of the loss of our citizens, the loss of our children. And we no longer want to do that. I mean, we really have to get to a point 
where we say we're not going to put up with this anymore. How are we going to handle these drug cartels? How are we going to target them across, you know, the southern border? How are we going to stop them from pushing their contraband into the United States and killing our citizens? Sure, we're never going to eradicate addiction. We're never going to be able to eradicate evil, but that doesn't give us the excuse as well to bury our heads in the sand and to not pay attention to what's happening to our communities. Sometimes people say, you know, lawmakers don't want to do anything about this, and sometimes parents don't want to do anything about this because it seems so big. It seems so enormous of a problem. They don't know where to start. Well, you always have to start at the beginning, and you have to start by paying attention to what is happening, not being afraid to call them out, not being afraid to say, look, we're not going to take this anymore. You are now enemy number one. You're not just a transnational criminal organization. You're a narco-terrorist organization. That's right. Killing our citizens. And I think when people start to view it that way, there's a place to start right there. And, and that's just the beginning. Uh, I think the administration is doing their job trying to move these um, items forward. Uh, we know this is very important to the president. Uh, and uh, we hope that it is just as important to every American out there with or without a child that wants to help save this nation from uh, the potential disaster that it's all, that's already on its way. Sarah Carter, investigative reporter, Fox News contributor. Her new documentary, Not in Vain, you can get that on YouTube right now if you search around for it, and we'll promote it at Breitbart News as well. Thanks, Sarah. That's right. Thank you so much. They can also get it at notinvainusa.com. That's notinvainusa.com. It's for everyone, so please feel free to take your time to watch it. It could save lives. Very good. I will save lives if enough people watch it. Sadly, I'm afraid that the people who really should watch it the most, the people on the left uh, who do not even give these arguments credence, they're going to ignore it, and they should not. It is to their own detriment. We'll be right back. This is Breitbart News Daily.